uh, I'm going to read a thing that I wrote. Uh, yeah. This is called One More Time in This Space. Wait a minute. Looks spontaneous when you start. <laughs> What's it called again? You, sh you should take it landscape. This poem is called One More Time in This Space. Way back in the hinter years of the early 1990s, Back when the vice president had barely invented the internet yet. Back when gasoline cost a certain amount of money and the end of Twin Peaks was still a recent memory. Way back then, 1994, the Cobalt Cafe reopened in this new spot a month or so after it had closed in its previous location. The band Digga Jigga Part African drum, part electric guitar, part poetry opened the room. It was a Friday night. The carpet was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Three days later, the Northridge earthquake shattered the front windows. Milk was spoiling all over town, but the very next day, with wood covering the damage and a fully operational espresso machine. The open reading went on. Steve hosted it. It was his job from the previous spot. He had long hair and wanted to be on MTV. He read the poetry of actress Justine Bateman and fostered the cultural black hole we have come to know as the group poem. A month or so later, after it was clear MTV was not going to call, he announced from the stage that this would be his last reading. Within 30 seconds, I was standing in front of Dave Politi, Cobalt owner and patron saint of poetry, and asked if I could have the job. He said, you're the guy. <laughs> And when it was my turn at the mic, I announced with the confidence of an asshole that I would be taking over. <laughs> the very next week, attendance plummeted. <laughs> and then, after a time, it built back up, way up, a golden age for poetry in the West San Fernando Valley. People came. Poets came. Chief Eagle Eye came. <laughs> I did away with the group poem for a while because I wanted the poets of Los Angeles to take this event seriously. That never happened, so I brought it back. <laughs> God help us all. A couple years in, the Valley Contemporary Poets walked in. They'd been hosting a reading around the corner. A plucky Brendan Constantine introduced his introduced himself, his head an aurora borealis of color. I was at the stage in my life where I didn't give a flying flapjack about other readings. So if I gave him the time of day that night, I'm sure I lied. <laughs> Who would have thought a thousand years later we'd still be making each other mixtapes and having our significant others constantly wondering if they should be jealous. <laughs> I remember Chief Eagle Eye carrying the torch every week for marijuana. Sing it if you remember it. Not so humble hippie from Humboldt County. And we don't grow no moonshine in them there hills. But we do grow that healthy herb called marijuana. And wish we all could enjoy it cheap and legal. <laughs> Forgot that word. <laughs> I don't know what happened to Chief Eagle Eye. I think he just forgot. <laughs> I remember Jerry 
quickly reading his oddly numbered bitter ex-girlfriend letters. Friday Griswold with a tongue almost as long as her legs. Christian elders stomping around the stage yelling with imperative about the sticky embrace of summer. Maxwell, just Maxwell, who yeah. gave... Yeah! Sorry. No, it's okay. Who gave his featured reading dressed in tinfoil. <laughs> Jeffrey McDaniel, who read here and thought it was a weird night. Little did he know that described every Tuesday here. The cockroaches I implored people to just give names to instead of letting them freak them out. Jeremy Rayton, who started reading poetry here as a baby, left for a while, then came back with words twisted up with his heart so good. Derek Brown reading in the open mic as Dick Richards when Amber Tamblin featured. The guy whose name I forgot who abruptly ended his fantastical story when I told him the time limit had passed with the words, and then the planet exploded. <laughs> Humberto, who would struggle to be understood in English, but came alive like Il Postino when he read his work in Spanish. Nelson Gary breaking in the middle of his reading to run around the room pretending to be a bird, his arms flapping like wings for what seemed like a much too long period of time for that to go on. I remember the awkward <laughs> Moments. <laughs> I remember the woman who, after I interrupted her reading because the time limit was an ancient memory, who told me to evolve. <laughs> The many, many people who gave their first featured reading in this spot, the many, many more people who read poetry in front of other human beings for the first time in this spot, the woman who worked behind the counter who asked me if I wanted the cheese or tomato on top back when they served food here, who I told to imagine, this was before I met my wife, <laughs> that I was the cheese and she was the tomato and we were in bed and make the sandwich like that. And then brought me a sandwich with cheese and tomato so intertwined you couldn't tell where one ended the, and the other began. Did I remember, did I mention that was before I met you? <laughs> Lost my place. I remember Sheehan. Oh, I can't even explain Sheehan to you, but we had t-shirts and mugs made up that had his poetry on it, which you can still buy on the internet today. Thank you, Cafe Press. Jeffrey Allen Rockland, who, who taught me that poems about meat. Jeffrey Liebling, who moved away to put solar panels in the Canadian forest. And several other people named Jeff, who sometimes would come on the same nights as the first two, causing the reading to devolve into a Jeff-off. <laughs> Ron Dvorkin, who kept his son alive forever by inserting his poetry into our consciousness. I remember Mike Daly. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to touch an emotional chord for everyone here. Uh, may he rest in Portland. Who brought a typewriter and insisted we use it to make the group poem for a while. The group poem. The group poem. Even more a form of a literary torture than the Sistine. The group poem never legitimate unless it has a reference to caca in it. The group poem where people were never afraid to limit themselves to words actually in the English language. The group poem written with handwriting reminiscent of people with no hands. The group poem. If I could tell you how many times people told me we should type those all in. 
I could never quite explain how that would essentially be the same thing as redoing the Holocaust. <laughs> the group home, all too many of them, waiting patiently in a filing cabinet in Van Nuys, waiting for the sun to burn out the planet so all that will be left will be them and the cobalt roaches. <laughs> I remember everybody I haven't already mentioned. <laughs> so many classes of cobalt regulars, everyone in this room who came here tonight to shed one last tear in this space, or maybe just for the food and the liquor that was free. I remember everyone who couldn't be here tonight, maybe because they're far away, maybe because they thought it would be awkward, maybe because they died. Francine. Erica Erdman, Jack Schaefer, Scott Womberg, Mike Buff, the person who you mentioned, Leilani, whose name I forget. James Manners. Under the ground now, but immortalized forever on 11 by 17 pieces of paper, may they rest in poetry. People ask me what I'm going to do with my Tuesday nights. Will I get a new venue? Maybe, sure, I don't know. I'll probably gather my cats in the living room every week about 8 o'clock and demand they listen to me ramble on senselessly for a while. I'll sure as hell start on time. The one drink minimum is on me. Here's to everyone who's ever been here. Every one of you deserves your own line in this poem but I've already gone well over the time limit. So many words coming out of your mouths, the young ones still talking about the darkness in their souls, the old ones telling us how it was, the ones in the middle writing like this was never going to end. That's the trick, write like it's never going to end. And so it ends. Probably. You know, you never know. <laughs> but in the meantime, let's tear our garments a little bit for the Cobalt Cafe. Let's put a stone of memory under the awning outside. Let's slip a little group home underneath our fingernails. Let's finally have that post-reading orgy. I mean you guys, I'm going home with my wife. <laughs> Let's shed that tear tonight, like the poetry of Doug Dvorkin that will not be forgotten. This really happened. 20 years, almost 21. Onward, my friends. Onward. Get your applause out now because the group poem is coming and no one will want to do it. <laughs>